the Montreal and has been one of the sons of Montreal once again. So welcome him with a salat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد حبيب الله رب العالمين وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين نصلي على محمد وآله محمد السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين My dear brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's always very difficult uh, to speak about such noble and faithful human being as Imam Hussain and the companions alayhi salam. I've been giving this honorable task, although I never felt personally that I am in such a position to mention their names, their glorious names. In front of them, I'm meaningless and insignificant. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. Allah the Most High says in His holy book, قُلْ إِنْ صَلَاتِ وَنُسِكِ وَحْيَاءِ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say surely my prayer and my sacrifice and my life and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the words. There is no doubt that in human history the best and the greatest example of willingness and readiness of sacrificing lives property and children, everything you have in your life in the cause of Allah was shown by Imam al Hussein and his companions in the battle of Karbala on the year 61 of Hijra. In Karbala, each of the companion, each of them was vowing with one another to give his life, to give his life in the cause of Allah. Tonight, I would, lo I would like to, to share with you the story of one of the shaheed, one of the martyr, Sa'id bin Abdullah al-Hanafi. While reading his story, one of the most uh, outstanding characteristics that I found from this companion, and as like we can see from the other companions, is his extreme love to Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his Ahl al-Bayt. The Prophet of Islam said, none of you will be a true believer until I am more beloved to him than himself. According to Islam, the highest level of divine love for any creatures, so the highest level of God love for any of his creatures is his love for perfect human beings such as the Prophets. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has a special place in this regard. One of the well-known of the Prophet is Habib, Habibullah which means the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mawlana Rumi points to love as God's motive for creation. So love of Muhammad is a God's motive for creation by commenting on a divine saying, Hadith Qudsi, that address to Muhammad, but for you I would not have created the heavenly spheres. And Rumi to continue with this poem, this line, those lines, love makes the ocean boil like a, like a pot. Love grinds mountains down to sand. Love splits the heaven in a hundred pieces. Love shakes the earth with a mighty shaking. Pure love was spared with Muhammad. Because of love, God said to him, but for you, since he alone was the goal of love, he was singled out from all the prophets. If not for pure love, why would I, would I give existence to the spheres? In the Hadith Al-Kisa, as well, it's narrated by Fatima Al-Zahra alayhi salam, one day the Ahlul Bayt gathered under the, under the Kisa, the Almighty said, Let it be known to you, my angels, and those who are in the heavens, that I have not, that I have not created the heavens and the earth and what is in them, but for my love for the five ones under the Kisa. Salawat. Such is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. And, Sa and Sa'id was among the true lovers of Ahlul Bayt, knowing for sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved them so much. 
and he loved them. And I will let the Imam Sahib al Asr wa Zaman, Sahib al Asr wa Zaman, Jalal Ta'ala Faraj al Sharif, talk about him in his famous ziyara, Ziyarat al Nahya. He says, This is the quote from the Imam Peace be open, Sa'id, son of Abdullah al Hanafi, who, expl who exclaimed unto Imam Hussein when the Imam gave him permission to depart, he said, no, by Allah, who will never desert you until Allah will see that we have defended the Holy Prophet by defending you. Here Sa'id knows very well that al Hussein is from the Prophet and the Prophet is from al Hussein. By Allah, if I knew that I would be killed and then made alive again and burned and my ashes strewn up in the wind, and if I were made to suffer all this 70 times, even then I would not desert you, but I would meet my fate along with you, not apart from you. And why should I not do so? Knowing that I have to die or be killed only once. And knowing that after that there's a, there awaits for me honor and rewards for days without end, eternally. So the Imam continues in the same ziyarah. So you went forth to meet your destiny and to help your Imam. And you attained honor from your Lord in the everlasting abode. May Allah revive us with you among the seekers of martyrdom and may he bestow upon you the grace of your friendship in the regions of the highest of the high in the regions of the highest of the high end of the quote of the ziyarah truly this martyr has reached the highest of the honor when the imam mentioned Sa'id being positioned in the hereafter as the highest of the high I mean this is for this campaign a special position I didn't all the other companions has attained for sure a magnificent state in the hereafter. But specifically for this position, there were secrets about him. And I'll mention some facts about his story. From the history book, Said was a noble, brave, and influential personality from Kufa. He was very helpful to Muslim Ibn Aqil when Muslim arrived to Kufa. And he carried Muslim's letter, the last one actually, from Kufa to Imam Hussein. It was the third letter that has the names of those willing to support the Imam. Once Sa'id reached the Imam, he gave him the letter and remained with him till Karbala. So Sa'id left Kufa with the letter, with the name of those that were ready to support him. And he stayed with the Imam and he traveled with him. No, actually, Sa'id didn't know what happened in Kufa yet. In the meantime, situation changed drastically in Kufa. Most of the names in those letters have backed up. Imagine. Even worse, they were placed in the enemy lines. Imagine the feeling of Sa'id on the battlefield, seeing those that most probably told him, told Sa'id, send our salam to the Imam, and now facing the Imam ready to fight him. Were they real Shia of Ahl al-Bayt? There's some myth we heard about it, and no, it is the Shia who killed Imam al Hussein. But are they real Shia? Is it that Shia? This is what it means to be a Shia, Shia of Ahl al-Bayt. A real Shia will never give his word and back up. As a matter of fact, most of the Kufans, people of Kufa, did not speak much in front of Muslim Ibn Aqil. Muslim used to gather those uh, elderly people and influential personality, and only three of them, you, three of those will, will speak. They are Shahid Abid, Shahid Habib, and Shahid Sa'id. Both were, went to, with Imam Hussein in Karbala. Why is that? Because most of them wanted the victory of Imam Hussein. They want Imam Hussein to be victorious over, over Yazid, but at the same time, they didn't want to die. They were not ready to die. So they stayed silent. They say, I better not talk. Some of them, all, some of the, uh, of them were those old men uh, praying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send victory on the Imam, but at the same time, they stayed behind, hidden in their houses. Unfortunately, unfortunately nowadays, the same attitude exists among the Islamic world and Islamic leaders. From some of the leaders who just doesn't, will just not care about Islam. Some will wish the victory of Islam, but they know that they are not ready to, to sacrifice the life or whatever they have, uh, they have in, this, in this life. And some will wish the victory of Islam. You will hear them in the, in the manbar, Allahumma ansar al-Muslimin wa muslimat you hear all this stuff. And will only do praise and dua as a matter of fact. This is not Islam. Islam is, first of all, action. Through action, a Muslim fulfill his faith and responsibility, and a Muslim use and a Muslim use du'a as as weapon and support in his life. So back to Karbala, one by one, each companion of the Imam went and died until Salat al-Dhuhr. 
So Sa'id was there till Salat al dhuhr And he came forward and informed the Imam that it's time for prayer. Although the battle was raging and fierce, those companions did not delay Salat. Again, a wonderful lesson from Karbala. Their life and action revolve around Salat. And not the way around, not Salat revolving around our day-to-day -day life. The battle was rage, raging, arrows were coming towards them. The enemy did not want to stop, actually they didn't care about Salat. But Imam, the Imam camps want to pray, so they stood in a single foil to perform the last prayers, while two companions of the Imam stayed as a shield to protect them, especially to protect the Imam, and one of them is Saeed. Saeed was stood in front of this line to hold back all the arrows that were coming towards them. Saeed anhu, would catch all the arrows with his whole body to avoid hurting the Imam. Imagine yourself for a second in this position, being as a shield in front of the Imam and just catching the arrows with your, with your chest, with your hand, whatever, but it should not touch the Imam. And feel the intense love and certitude of faith of Sa'id towards Al Hussein alayhi salam. He put, he, he put his words into action. He did not just talk for talking. When he said the night before, the night, the, the, day, the night of the, ni uh, the nine of Muharram, he said, If I knew that I would be killed and made alive again and burned, and my ashes thrown up in the wind, and if I were made to suffer all this 70 times, even then I would not desert you. And he put that into action. Once the Imam finished, the last words of the prayer, Sa'id died of exhaustion and bleeding. But God knows, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how successfully he fulfilled his duty towards Muhammad and his Ahlul Bayt in the service of Allah out of his love. Hasbi Allah wa naam al wakil. Astaghfirullah ya Rabbi wa tubi alayhi wa salam alaykum wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much. I'm now going to ask for Sister Natasha Moji to come forward. Sister Natasha is one of the uh, key inspirations and movers for Thakalian Muslim Association here in Montreal for 